Right. Okay. So this are this is an attempt just to give you um, a bit of a life raft if you've not really worked online before and are worried about how you're going to help students make sense of their learning online. Um, there are some basic principles here that I think are really important to follow in in my own experience. First of all, keep things simple. Um, with the kind of time scale that you're working on, don't try and do anything too fancy unless you're really confident with using Blackboard and multimedia, and et cetera, in which case, go and fill your boots. Um, but keep things simple. And I'll, I'll, I'll take you through the little model I've got below and then show you how that would work. Make sure the structure on Blackboard is really clear. Um, with a lot of experience in distance learning, one of the main problems that students have is they're not sure how to make use of the resources that they're being exposed to. They're not sure how they fit together. So you need a really simple structure. And then finally, as well as getting uh, students working online by themselves, if you feel it is appropriate or you think it would be useful, um, and if you're willing to put in a little bit of extra work, I'll explain why you might need that in a minute, um, then you can use discussion boards to encourage students to answer specific questions or discuss things with one another and you moderate that, you get involved in that to um, help counteract any misconceptions. So there's sort of some very basic principles. Um, any session that you are thinking of putting online, um, really, really simple. Okay, first of all, I'm guessing the vast majority of your sessions have some kind of PowerPoint presentation. Now, it might be that your PowerPoint presentations are an introduction to a much more active um, session where students then are trying things out and playing around with things. At the moment, the most important thing at the moment is that you're getting them the core information and knowledge that they need. So if you have a session with a PowerPoint presentation, that is going to be the core of your online resource. You can do lots of ways of splicing audios into PowerPoint presentations. Again, if you're happy doing that, you understand how to do that, then go ahead and do that. A very quick way of doing it is to, rather than trying to splice something into the PowerPoint so that the PowerPoint becomes a video, is to leave the PowerPoint as it is, but then record an audio file to go with it, an MP3 audio file to go with it. And I'll show you how to do that in a few minutes. And then finally, having had the students engage visually and, and through audio with the core information, you can then add some reading that you want to do after that. Two or three, preferably um, citations that you know are online or are in electronic format so that students right across the cohort can get hold of them. Obviously, at the moment, the whole idea of this is that you don't want to use physical reading books pre predominantly because you don't want people coming into the library or if there's only one, two or three copies, if there are 60 or 70 people engaging with this online, then obviously they're not going to be able to get hold of that reading. So that's the basic principle. Each session is just going to be put online as a PowerPoint presentation with an associated audio and some reading. Nothing else. OK, and, and yes, that's not going to be the most exciting thing for students to go through. But actually, if they've got a PowerPoint presentation with something like a 20 or 30 minute audio and some reading to do, then that's probably going to keep you going for most of a day. That's one session. So. Um, let's look at the environment. So I'm just going to take I'm just using stuff that I've got. Um, um, access to just to give you an idea. So here's the doctorate in education um, blackboard area. And we've got various sort of uh, areas open similar to, to what you'll have. All you need to do for the purpose of them working from home is not bother them with all the various folders. What you want to do, if you look on the left hand side at the top, you should be able to um, add in a content area and all you're trying to do here is to just create a new content area similar to all of these content areas 
so that you've got something that they can go to very easy, easily, very specifically, etc. So I'm going to go to their content area and I'm just going to call it COVID cover sessions. Okay, so COVID virus cover sessions. So they know as soon as I submit that, okay, it's down the bottom here. All right. That means that they don't have to bother about looking for anything anywhere else. They don't have to bother looking in the main body because as soon as you start giving people lots of instructions about where things are, they're going to have problems. You can do it. And for anybody who wants to link back into main bodies, because there's a lot there that they couldn't do as a simple life raft, drop me an email. Um, I'm going to say here that I want it to show the link, because at the moment, nobody could see the link because it's actually hidden from students. So what I need to do is show them the link. OK, so that now they can get into. OK, and that that's really important. So all I do now is go COVID virus cover sessions in my particular module. And then all I'm going to do is build content. So the first thing I want to do is um, but a, but a, but a content folder. And all I'm going to do is write, right, session one of the sessions that I'm going to cover within this period. I can then have in the build content area as many folders as I want or as many sessions as I've got. The idea is that as soon as they come in, they're not having to muck around. They're not having to look for new information where, where it may or may not be. They can just go straight to the cold COVID virus cover sessions. And as soon as they click on that, they come into a series of sessions within my module. And then all I do is say, right, session one. Now, I'm going to use just um, a PowerPoint that I happen to have. Um, it's nothing to do with the kind of things that you might be doing. But it's, again, it's just to show you the principle. And I'm going to put item and I'm going to put session PowerPoint. And then, um, sorry. I'm then going to put uh, this is the main power point for this session which you should um, engage with in conjunction with the associated audio file okay attachments browse my computer I'm just gonna go up ah. I'm just going to go into some stuff from last year, and I did a session for researchers using social media. doesn't matter. It's just a PowerPoint. Um, permit users to view this. Yes, I'm not going to bother tracking, although you may decide, since people are working remotely, that you do want to track who's using it or track number of views. And then I'm just going to submit. And there we go. We've got the social media PowerPoint in there, session PowerPoint, saying what they're going to do with it, etc. Likewise, further down, you can create um, just a, a reference list of the main references. You can hyperlink them in, but it's complex. You might just want to give them a list and tell them that they just have to go and look up the three or four references that you give them online. So build content, um, item, um, reading for this session please uh, find the following references online in in, um, in the library online from sorry the library um, and download to read and then all you do then is is put three or four, probably just three or four um, references in, and that's that done. Now you need an audio. So if I go to, in my case, I'm on a on a Windows laptop. Um, I could go probably actually online 
Um, all I need to do, and we might have this on computers at work, but I'm just going to show you it here. There's a thing called Audacity, and it's a free, totally open piece of software for recording audio files. And all you do is you go to download. It's got it in Windows. It's got it for Macs. If you do run Linux, I don't think many people do ever did, but you can upload it. You download it as you would download a normal piece of software. We can minimize this a second, get rid of that. Um, I'm hoping, I think I've got a copy of it somewhere already. Um, if not, I'll download it myself. No, I haven't. So um, just to show you how it works, download Audacity, Audacity for Windows. Um, Uh, da -da 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 -da. Just going for the download button. Download. Windows installer. Down here. Click on there because I'm using I'm using. Um, Chrome. It may look different for whatever you're using. Okay. English. Okay. Next. 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 Install. So I'm now just installing it. And finish. And then there you go, it's going to open up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this video here because I want a video on how to use Audacity. And what I'll do in the second video is once we've created an Audacity file, I'll show you how to just drop it into Blackboard. And then you'll have those three main elements that make up a really simple but pretty bulletproof and easy to navigate way of producing some core stuff online. Okay. And that's the important thing. Really, all you're wanting at this stage is something that is bulletproof, you know, is going to work, that you're not going to have problems with so that the students can get what they need. Um, so, yeah, I hope this introduction has been useful. Obviously, it may be um, that you need to look through various bits of it again if you're not used to some of the stuff I've talked about. If you're struggling, get in contact with me, philip.wood at bishopg.ac.uk. Um, and if there's any particular elements you want me to go through, I will do. That's no problem.